Hey guys, Tom Tackle here, and today we're going to be talking about spinner beats. We're going to be talking about trailer hooks, no trailer hooks, we're going to be talking about weight, we're going to be talking about color, and we're just going to talk about blades too, so. Yeah, so. And trailers. Let's start with the collar. So, one great collar to have that you can just go out, catch you some fish, have fun. Just if you can have one color, it would be something white. This here is a booyah spinnerbait. Nice and white. And yeah, it's and a three eighth. If we could have one color to go out and see if I liked spinnerbait fishing, it would be white. The white just does great. At ponds, I've caught my second biggest fish in springtime off of a white spinnerbait. But it's always a good idea to have a handful of spinnerbaits. It's not a lot of money. Like you can, um, Walmart sells them, sell spinnerbaits for one dollar, and I caught like five pound fish on the one dollar spinnerbait. Was this your biggest fish? That was one of my big fish right there. All right, so. But it's always good to have a handful of colors because right here, this red Shark King's spinnerbait. Shark King, it's like a Delta Curl. Yeah, Delta Curl. And this will do really, really great in the spring for, for um, pre-spawn and post-spawn. It's going to imitate, imitate a curl. Through pre-spawn to post-spawn. This going to fish are going to be smashing the curls and that's the best color to do it with. Alrighty, and if you're a pond guy, a great color to go with is a bluegill. Because there's probably not going to be shad in a pond, so you're probably going to go with bluegill. If bass are eating the bluegill, then you should go with bluegill. Unless your pond is chocolate milk. Like, you can't even see down one inch. You want to go with, like, a white... Or a sartreuse. The sartreuse white works really good for that color. Um, let's talk about the. You know what trailers? Trailers. Yeah, we'll talk about trailers. All right. So trailer hook is an extra added hook. So we got the main hook and then another hook. That's a that's. And then there's another hook that's even smaller. So, what the downside to the trailer hook is, is that if you have a trailer hook, the spinnerbait is lo lost all its weedlessness. So, if you're throwing this around rock and stuff, that's perfectly fine as long as there's no cover, like logs. But, um, there's going to be a lot of times where you can, ta you can take a spinnerbait without this trailer hook get back into that cover back farther than what you've ever gone before and pull it out and you can discover tons of places to catch more fish but yeah. with that trailer hook you can't even go to cover don't even go to cover there's a lot of chances you'll get snagged so no trailer hook will do perfect i mean you can take this down into no cover and still catch a ton of fish while you can Take it back into that cover, way back in that cover. All right, yeah. Without a trail hook, you can go over logs, under logs, around bushes. You could, you could just. This is weedless. It's well, it's not weedless, but it it could go through some brush because of this long wire that hangs down past the hook. And so yeah, you want to talk about weight? Yeah, weight. All right. So if you're a shallow fisherman, a good weight to have. For a spinnerbait would be a 3-8 ounce. So like a pawn person, this video right here is 3-8. Three, 3-8 three ounce would work good. But if you're like a late guy, a half ounce. Yeah, half, half ounce, ounce is great, great. Even for ponds, because the ponds are going to be deepened and they're going to be shallow part. Of. So you can take a half ounce. I don't know if this is a half ounce or not. I'm pretty sure it it's is. probably half ounce. Where you can, if you're on a boat, you can cast it deep. Reel it in, cast it shallow, and you'll do perfectly fine. You just gotta reel it a little faster to get over those logs. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so, if you're fishing out deep with a, well, I'm talking. 
Yeah. But so hat. with weight, if you're dedicated to one or the other, it'd be great for shallow with a three eighth ounce, or if you're going heavy with a half ounce. Well, a half ounce could still do do good up shallow. It's just that whatever you're wanting to do the most, if you're wanting to stay stick with one the most. Shallow, three eighth ounce. You can reel it slower than the half ounce, and but you can't get it as you as you can with the half ounce. So yeah, it's kind of just what you want. All right. So if you're trying to imitate a bluegill right here, or or a shad with the white, a good um a good blade would be a willow leaf. It's just big and it when it comes and it's just spinning around the water it just looks more like a bluegill wood all right now you're gonna talk about different trailers that are really good yeah so these right here these are the bio spawn bio spawn exo swim this one's a three three point two five three point two five inch Really small, but I only wanted them for trailers. They're perfect for your three eighth ounce right here. Your three eighth ounce trailer. Yeah, boss corn. They're gonna be just be a kick and well, there's Kytex too, but they're a little bit more expensive. But and a striking rage swimmer. I got some of them. A striking rage swimmer. They swim all really good too. And then if you have muddier water, you can uh, a great one would probably be. I use this ball bug and catch just as much fish as I do with that bow spawn. Great bait. It's got a lot of action. Put it on sideways to where it's like this and not like this. That'll do really well. Um, and it comes in different colors. So yeah, that works really well. Alrighty guys, thank you, thanks for watching and hope you learned something from this video and see ya.